Linson are perhaps the best known of the Dutch steel builders. And the example we have here today is a 35 SL. Now the SL range are the uh, slightly more modern, it stands for Sport Lux, and it uses exactly the same hull as the Grand Sturdy range, but just has that slightly more modern look with uh, rubber fenders rather than traditional rope ones, this slightly darker color scheme, and gives it a slightly more youthful, sporty appearance. But we have to say that when it comes to sport, that is not a word you would necessarily associate with Linson. They are, of course, full displacement steel cruisers, beautifully built and very, very well thought out. Now, this is the 35 SL sedan model. They also do an aft cabin version. And this is the most popular model that they sell. It is the perfect combination in terms of size, efficiency and ease of handling. So, what do you need to know? A few basics first of all. Being all steel, uh, it is 5mm steel below the waterline, it is 4mm steel above it, and it is all coated with an all-grip system to ensure that it stays completely corrosion resistant. Now, the sedan model clearly means that instead of an aft cabin at the back end, you have this very nice open cockpit, but extremely well thought through. You can see there are canopies that all roll up around it, but they also roll down and you can have a really secure, weatherproof cockpit area too. But one of the rather nice things about the way they've done this is you can see that the cockpit doesn't quite go all the way out to the side of the boat. There is a special reserved area here. This is partly so that you can store fenders there when you're underway, but it also means when you do roll these canopies down, you still have a place to move along outside the boat so that you can hand your fenders, do your lines, etc. We'll have a quick walk around the decks first. There's a few things I'd like to point out on here. First of all, grab rails on the top, good deep tow rails, bulwarks, so that you feel nice and secure when you're walking along the side decks. Easy to access waste system for pumping out. And this is a neat idea. It's just a gate in the side, but rather than swinging outwards, it folds down and creates a ladder. They've got a, an advertising hoarding on there at the moment, so I can't do it, but you can see that that becomes a step and it folds all the way down. It just means you get a bit more usage, usage out of what ordinarily would just be a swing out gate. Big sunroof on top, you can see that slides back on these tracks. We'll show you that from inside too. And then traditional four deck arrangement. Nothing particularly unusual about the way it works. This is the mast with a steaming light and so on. That all folds down just to reduce the height. Obviously, these are very popular on inland waterways, so it's really good to be able to fold everything down and minimize the air draft when you're sneaking under low bridges, etc. Beautifully finished everywhere you look. Even things like these cleats, you can see they have lovely polished ends to both of them, perfectly integrated. There's no kind of crude edges or poor finishing. It's all beautifully done. All the welds polished out of the stainless steel. Sturdy single anchor system. And exactly the same down this side. Again, with that little recess that enables you to store the fenders and walk down the side. And you can see it has got scuppers down there, so any water drains away. Now, lovely sociable cockpit, not the largest, it's only a 35 foot boat. But one thing you do notice is that this table here is exactly the same table that works inside the saloon. It's nice and light, you literally just lift it in and out. Let's have a quick look under here. This is not the engine, this is just storage. We'll show you the engine in a second. But everywhere you look in this boat, there is masses of storage. They just think it through so well. But look how beautifully finished it is inside here too. Now the shaft runs actually under the boat inside the keel. You can just see the entry point where it comes out of the hull and into the keel. Now there is a full length keel on this boat and it's relatively shallow at the bow end and then gets deeper towards the stern so the propeller is actually completely encased and protected inside the keel area which just means that if you do happen to nudge the bottom of a particularly shallow stretch of river or canal, it means that the propeller itself won't be damaged. Very good secure doors, simple side hinge, nothing 
complicated in terms of sliding or bifold, but very secure. And then a saloon, exactly what you'd expect. Good headroom, lots of light all the way around. We've got sliding window up by the helm. Again, nothing too complicated or fancy. It's all just solid, secure, simple, reliable. And here's this big overhead sunroof. You just see there's a little button up there, but if I press that open, there's something about the way that moves. It just <laughs> sounds very solid, very reassuring. You just know that that's gonna work for the lifetime of the boat. But look how large that is too. That's a really big opening all the way up, lets the sun pour in. Ideal for cruising along waterway. And good to see that there are also slide across mosquito nets. Small thing, but again, just feels really solid and sturdy and so simple. And you've got a blind that side if you want to keep the sun out. So you can have it as open, as closed, mosquito net, whatever you like. Galley over on the port side, nothing terribly unusual or clever. Simple gas hob, again, just means you don't have to be plugged in. You can keep going and cook yourself a meal without having to make sure that you're always shore power available. Lots of storage, bin, fridge. Oven in here. Draw for all the cutlery. And this is a rather lovely desk area. You can see it's just a pull out. Actually, I wanted to show you something under here too, because this is rather neat. Look at this. Completely dead space, which they have turned into a really handy basket to keep your shoes or your cables or whatever you want to. And here, this also lifts up to reveal the neat little television. So when you're sat at the saloon on this side, you've got a discreet but perfectly watchable television that doubles as a very handy desk. Lots of storage. I won't do them all, but you can see there's a whole row of drawers down there. And the engine is under here. If I lift that up, and look how neat this all is. Obviously doesn't need an awful lot of power. This is a Volvo D2 engine with 75 horsepower. The joy of that is that it uses very little fuel. It'll happily take you along at the maximum hull speed of around about eight knots, but most of the time you'll be doing five or six knots. And at that speed, it is consuming just six liters per hour. Now here is the fuel tank. This is a 240 liter fuel tank. It's really not much bigger than some cars, but at six liters per hour, you're going to be getting a range of sort of 240 miles, no problem at all. So imagine that, you can probably do most of a season on a couple of tanks of fuel, which <laughs> makes a huge difference to the kind of vast several thousand liter tanks that you usually need on a 35 liter planing boat. Now everything beautifully done, you can see that sturdy steel floor here all beautifully painted out, nice accessible raw water strainer, automatic fire system. That is the heating system. That is the fuel tank, fuel filter, and batteries along here. But just all so easy and clean and fuss free. It's one of the great benefits of these lints and boats is they're just easy to look after, easy to maintain, cheap to run, and very well thought through. Bit more storage under here, I'm guessing. There we go. Look at that. Again, because that engine takes up so little space, all this empty hull is free for storage, and there's a neat racking system. Oh, I think that's my phone buzzing away. I'll just kill that. But you can see we've got uh, crates in here and a little bar, and all you have to do is lift that bar and then the crates will slide down. You can access the outer one, refill it, push them back, job done. Close that down. 
U, well, just about a sort of U shape. It's probably more like an L with a little extension on it. Quite a neat idea here. This is, in fact, the helm seat, which folds forward and down to make sure you can get to this corner. But when you want to bring it into use, you just slide it forward this way. Uh, oh, hang on, I need an extra hand. There we go. Slide it forward, backrest folds up, and then you've got a comfortable enough helm seat right here. A bit more storage under here, spices, teas and coffees, etc. And up above, very traditional helm station, big, almost sort of sailing style wheel, but, wheel, but nice sort of detailing having that wooden rim, thin stainless steel rims. You've got that opening window there. Very simple Morse style single lever control. Bow and stern thrusters. Pretty important actually on a, on a single engine steel boat like this. Sh shaft drive, you really do need bow and stern thrusters to make sure you can get the stern in, particularly when you're backing in in reverse, you get a pretty tricky steering because of the prop walk effect. So having a bow and stern thruster just makes it all that much easier. Decent windscreen wiper, three separate screens. But again, when you're doing five or six knots, it's not like you need a, a very complicated, expensive single piece screen. That's fine. You get decent view all the way around. Perfectly good at the kind of speeds you're doing. And then drop down into the accommodation. Again, there's yet more storage in here. Good hanging locker. And just the one cabin. Very popular with, with cruising couples, often slightly older customers perhaps, but what a lovely way to spend a retirement or if you can afford to take a few weeks off and tootle across to the waterways of Europe, you can spend the whole summer cruising around in comfort. Very comfortable cabin, lots of storage on either side. But what I really like about this is that they have put the shower and the heads compartment in separate compartments. So here you've got the shower, really good size, completely separate. So you've got no sink or loo or anything in here. So this can be a total wet room. You don't have to worry about what does or doesn't get wet, but what a lovely size that is. Teak bench in the corner. And then the heads is over on this side. Again, just makes so much sense having them in separate cabins so both can be used at the same time if you want to. Both can stay separate. This is always going to be dry. The shower can be wet. It just makes the whole thing much more usable, particularly on a relatively compact boat like this. Now, the heads compartment does have separate access through here, so that if you do have day guests on board, they can access it through this door here. Right. Just as we're coming back through here, I just thought I'd show you so there is the sedan version that we've been looking through this is the aft cabin version so it's exactly the same hull but you get an aft cabin at the stern which means you have one cabin in the back one cabin in the front slightly smaller saloon and then a raised cockpit up here with an outside helm station so you've got the option of the sedan or that aft cabin now prices for this boat this particular model as it is here £330,000, including VAT. Top speed of around eight knots. I think we've already talked through fuel consumption and so on. But that, to me, is a really practical, attractive looking, comfortable steel cruiser. Nine and a half tons, really solidly built, very nicely finished, fuss free, affordable, efficient cruising. That is the Linson 35 SL. I hope you've enjoyed seeing something a little bit different. I think waterways cruising is often rather underrated, but if you do get into the waterways of Europe or the rivers of the UK on the Thames, for example, what a lovely way to go cruising. Do let me know what you make of the boat in your comments. Always interested to see it. And thank you very much for watching.